One could have been excused for believing that Dame Carol and McCall had settled in for a cozy conversation on the this morning sofa as they watched her take her seat in the gloomy portcullis house in Westminster. She calmly explained IDV's safeguarding rules and procedures with poise and professionalism, scarcely revealing the many hours of diligent rehearsal and training that must have taken place behind the scenes. These include her own weekly vodcasts when she addresses her staff by video link, a large array of various support networks, a confidential phone line for employees to report any inappropriate behavior, etc. She frequently reminded the panel that she, too, had fallen victim to Philip Schofield's fabrications and maintained that supervisors could not have opened a formal inquiry based on idle rumors floating about the workplace. She was accompanied by the channel's head of media and entertainment, Kevin Ligo. Regarding the showreel created for Schofield's young lover, which included an interview with the great man himself and has raised eyebrows, Dame Carol Inn said that all participants in the IDV pool would have had the same access to the chance. Even former actor Eamon Helms, who has made some very well-publicized claims that the top brass was aware of the affair, was defeated by the two. Instead of being portrayed as a kind ex-employee who never complained while he was enjoying himself at IDV, the affable Irishman who departed this morning in 2021 was depicted as an angry ex-employee. If this had been a spot on the well-known morning program, Dame Carolyn would have felt very good about herself. There were no commercial breaks or oddball portions, however, within the Grimmond Room. John Nicholson unleashed his scathing attack on the channel an hour and 21 minutes into the hearing, making Dame Carolyn appear as though she had accidentally stumbled into the set of The Apprentice. As the IDV executive's face turned stone, he addressed the audience, saying, What this is about is bullying and protecting staff. How many personnel complaints had they had regarding their presenters or top management, he then queried an alarmed LIGO. None, it seems. Before showing a complaint and email sent from LIGO's office, Nicholson said, that's funny. Then, after announcing on Twitter that his DMs were available for people to submit their horror stories, he produced hundreds of testimonials from both current and past employees. As he described how staff members had been yelled at, denigrated, and when they dared complain, driven out, the ink was still wet on a freshly signed NDA. Nicholson, a former ITV presenter himself, stared Dame McCall in the eye. Dame Carolyn could only murmur through gritted teeth that it was very distressing in response to this. She subsequently requested that Nicholson give the evidence to IDV, but Nicholson refused. And it wasn't even the worst of it, as Chair Caroline Dineenage later voiced worries about how candidates on the formerly well-liked Tex Factor were handled. Dame Carolyn may have felt that she was in Simon Cowell's direct line of sight when she criticized production firm Fremantle, as though neither she nor it were her business. Today, ITV's 5,000 employees witnessed their boss wounded and weak, which is not the image she strives to project at HQ where she wants to be seen as a strong leader. However, she may have taken sufficient action to prevent additional government meddling with the underfire route. Regarding Dame Carolyn's personal future there, she has made it clear that she has no plans to leave. She could be left with no option, though, if the outside investigation continues. Having her destiny in the hands of Ms. Mulcahy Casey must be quite uncomfortable for a high flyer like Dame Carolyn.